Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone who is here with us tonight. Uh, and those who are listening at any time of the day, you are listening to this on YouTube. We want to talk very quickly about five questions to reflect upon and learn from uh, the past to empower and shape the future. These five questions are questions that will revolutionize your 2024 if you take the time and diligence to go through them. If you take the time and diligence to ensure that you ask yourself these questions and you plan and channel how you want to do your business, these will make a difference. Okay? It will make a world of difference. So for everybody who is here today, I'd like to congratulate you for being here today because you're going to be participating in something that transcends your business. Uh, whatever business you are doing, whatever other side hustle you have, and for the guests in the house today, this is not a meeting strictly for a particular company. This is something that affects all of us. So whatever it is you are doing uh, with your life, with your business, with your time, these are questions you need to ask yourself before you swing into full gear, okay, for the coming year. So if you are here today, please pay attention. This meeting is for your benefit. Why do we need to review? Why do we need to ask about the past? Okay, the reason why we need to review and ask about the past is because history is a prerequisite to maturity. What does this mean? It means that if you really want to grow and mature and enter into your fullest capabilities, you need to know what happened before you came. Uh, history is required for maturity. People who don't know the things that happened in the past are forever children. Okay, history is also a necessity for staying in control because if you don't know what happened before you, you are doomed to repeat it, okay? And there's so many lessons in failure, so many lessons in failure that if we don't review the past, we will never be armed with those lessons, okay? Uh, every time you do something and you don't get it, it's called fail, and there's an acronym for it these days. It's called first attempt in learning. I think it was John Maxwell that came up with first attempt in learning as an acronym for fail, basically saying that Failure offers phenomenal opportunity for people to do well. So if you fail and you learn the lessons, you are better armed to do well in the future. That's why we need to review. Many of us, we are so eager to set goals for the new year, so eager to pounce on 2024. We feel we are already left behind. You know, the year is already two days in. How come I, have, I don't have absolute clarity about what I want to achieve this year? I'd like to say to you today, slow down, review the past, before you project for the future. Why? Because history is a requirement for maturity, history is a requirement for control, and failure is a lesson ground, okay? I tell people, when you spend money and you lose money on the, on the project, don't just go away, go away with the lessons, okay? You have not lost completely on anything you have learned from, but if there's nothing to learn uh, from that process, then you have lost. But for as long as there's something to learn, you have not lost. You have only had the first attempt in learning. Now, there are a few very interesting quotable quotes I found uh, that reinforce this set of beliefs. The first one is from Cicero. Cicero says, to be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. But what is the worth of a human life unless it is woven into the life of our ancestors by the records of history? This was Cicero. Okay. We suggest he said, the further backward you look, you can look, the further forward you can see. Mm. Mm. Very deep. The farther backward you can look, the farther forward you can see. Uh, it's very deep. If anybody understands this, it says, if you can't look back long enough, you can't see farther enough. Okay, we've gone through a journey together. For example, many of us who do business, if you look back, 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 then you can see the front and know that, you know what, we're in a very critical moment in our future, we're in that place where it breaks, where it breaks forth and breaks through. And George... Santayana, who's an author and a philosopher as well, said, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why it's important to ask these fundamental questions about 2023, about our immediate past, is so that what we are formulating for 2024 becomes something that is crucial that can help us move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are here today and you are interested in looking further back in 2023 so I can be armed to see further forward in 2024, give me a yes with an exclamation mark in that comment box as I move forward into the content of today's conversation. Give me a yes 
with an exclamation mark. Okay, let's begin to examine these questions. So the questions are important because of their, the, the point they play. And of course, history. Okay, history offers, uh, a failure offers a lot of learnings as well. I can see how yes, it's beautiful. Now, this, this happened sometime during the Second World War. A brilliant Jewish mathematician, Abraham Wald, made an interesting discovery in the Second World War. And there was a challenge to find the best place to put an armor on an aircraft to protect it from crashing. Now, this happened for real. Okay? This happened for real. It happened for real that a particular, you know, the, the particular number of scientists and mathematicians were gathered together in a room. And in the room where they were gathered, there was a challenge. They were looking for the best place on the plane to place ammo to protect the planes during the war so that when they shoot at the planes, the planes can survive. And then they had done this thing to make the plane survive and they were applying ammo on various parts. And why was this a problem? It was a problem because if the ammo was too heavy, then the planes would not fly fast enough and it would be easy to shoot them. If they were too light, then any small shot at any part of the tank will easily leak the engines and destroy the plane. So they were asking mathematically, scientifically, physically, chemically, how can we armor, how can we put extra armor on this plane in such a way, okay, that it's going to be ironclad, it's going to be protected, and it will not be penetrated. It can't be too heavy, it can't be too light. How should they do this? And they had brainstormed for days. They had tried different approaches, they had lost different planes, they couldn't find a solution until they invited this mathematician, Abraham Wald, into the room. And Abraham Wald asked them, guys, what have you been doing? And they said, what we've been doing is, we've been looking at the planes that went into the flight, the planes that were shot, that have bullet holes, that were able to make it back to our station. We have invested all of these planes, assessed all the places where the bullets hit them, and tried to look for their vulnerabilities. And that's what I tried to cover for. We're covering for where they are vulnerable. And Abraham Wald thought for a while, and said, oh, that's why you can't find the answer. He said, why can't we find the answer? So you can't find the answer because you are going forward with the wrong assumption. You are looking at this from the wrong perspective. He said, what's the right perspective? He said, you are looking at the planes that made it back. If you want to find the place to armor your planes, go and look for the planes that crashed. If you look at the planes that crashed, you will find where the bullet hole made them crash. If you block that place, you'll have found the optimum place to block in order to succeed. His groundbreaking discovery was simple. The best place to learn from is not success, but failure. If you want to get the best lessons, you get the best lessons from where things failed. Yes, success holds a few lessons, but the biggest lessons are available in failure. So instead of glossing over your past year and feeling, no, I want to leave it behind me, things I used to do, I do them no more, the past is past, you need to sit down, evaluate the past, the good, bad, and the ugly, and then use the lessons you learn from there to reposition and restructure the future. If you are getting what I'm saying, give me in the comment box, I hear. Okay? I hear. Now, very quickly, I want us to go into these five empowering questions. These five questions that when you hear, when you ask them, and you detail down your answers, helps you to get a good grasp of the past so they can understand how you want to plot the future. Okay? I can see that here, 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 here. Beautiful. So let's go. Let's take questions one by one. The first question I'd like you to consider, you can write this down and take out your own time. It might take you one hour, it might take you two hours. Take out your time to exhaust the answers here. What were my significant wins or achievements in the last year? Where did I win last year? And what were my achievements? And these achievements could include which habits did I develop? Which places did I travel to? What bad habits did I overcome? Which skill did I acquire? Which hobbies did I explore? What job transitions did I do? What goals did I accomplish? What relationships did I form? What financial milestones did I achieve? Categorize these achievements into spiritual, health, career, relationships, financial, business. Break them into categories, but ask yourself, what were my significant wins or achievements in the last year? It may shock you that you have a few. It may shock you that you have none. It may shock you that the whole of last year was empty. Or it may shock you that last year you were able to do some phenomenal things. But guess what? It doesn't matter whether you failed or you succeeded. 
it matters that you are able to review because in reviewing, you begin to pick up the signals of what is missing that you would like to be present in your life this year and your goals are likely to be better because of the history that you have gone through. So question one, what were my significant wins or achievements in the last year? Under habits, under places travel, under bad habits overcome, skills acquired, hobbies explored, job transitions, goals accomplished, relationships formed, financial milestones, business milestones, categorize them under spiritual, health, career, relationship, mental, financial, the wheel of life, and you have your question one. If you are done with this, now, we're not going to do exercise here. I'm giving you the questions so that you can go and do your exercise. Okay? It's very important. What did I achieve last year? How much did I earn last year? Okay? How, which friends did I make last year? Which relationship did I build last year? Okay, what was I able to accomplish as far as my health was concerned last year? How did I grow spiritually last year? You know, how did I grow in my career? How did I grow in my intellect? Did I learn anything new last year? Did I do a new degree last year? Did I do a new course last year? What skills did I develop last year? Question one. Okay, if you are done with question one, you understand question one is clear to you. Help me type one in that comment box as I move to two. Give me one, 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 and then I move. Thank you. Good. Question two. What were my significant mistakes or anti-achievements in the last year? We have looked at the things you achieved. Fantastic. What things did I not achieve? What things were my significant mistakes or anti-achievements in the last year? What decisions and actions did I make that I'm not proud of? What choices would I have not done if, you know, in hindsight, that are wrong? that left me feeling unfulfilled. Now, many of us usually don't want to talk about this. This is not something we want to have as, as something we're thinking about. But it's so important. It's so important because your ability to control the new year is a function of the clarity you have about the past. The further backward you can look, the more you're able to connect the dots going forward. So, did you make any mistake last year? Think about it. Maybe you made a mistake with a relationship. Maybe a relationship got broken because of a mistake. Maybe there was something you should have done, you should have tried, you should have ventured and tried, but you didn't try. They asked you to sign up, but you didn't. You couldn't. Okay? Maybe there's something like that, that that's going on that you are not able to do. What mistakes or anti-achievements did you make last year? Please, if you can hear me loud and clear, give me a sign. Somebody said it's breaking. I hope it's restored now. And you can hear well now. Okay? You can hear me well now. Good. If you can't hear me well, just alert me. Somebody says audio is breaking loud and clear. Okay, excellent. So, what mistakes and the achievements did I make last year? This is number two. So, you want to take out time and document them. Document the mistakes. Document the things you didn't do well. Document the things, you know, that you know that, okay, this is clearly a failure on my part. Document them. Question number two. If you are done with two, give me two as I march on boldly and majestically into question three. Okay, I have a lot of twos, 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 twos. Let's move forward. Question number three. What are my highest or what were my highest and lowest points last year? Now, this is something you probably need to scroll through your gallery, uh, scroll through your gallery, scroll your phone through your journal to know at what points were you at your highest and your lowest last year? Were there moments you felt very happy last year? Were there moments you felt very sad last year? Identify the moments of joy and excitement as well as the instances of stress and anxiety. Pinpoint your biggest boosters and your obstacles last year. Did a child of yours get married? Did the child of yours, you know, get graduates? Did a child of yours give birth to a child? Did something happen in your family that was joy? Did you achieve a result? Did you achieve a rank? Did you win an award? You know, are you recognized? What were your high points? What were your highest moments? You know, did you... Did you become quads? Somebody celebrates you for something. What were your highest and lowest points last year? Identify them. 
because it will help you reinforce the achievements, help you reinforce the mistakes as well. It's helping you point out again in the categories where are you functioning, where are you not functioning, what part of your life is not is not counting, and where are you getting those things that count. Okay, very simple question number three: What are your high points? What are your low points? All of us have our mountains and our valleys. Okay, our valleys build character. Our mountains are where we demonstrate our character and our values and our you know and what we have been given. The values where they are built. And you have those moments. Can you remember those moments in the course of last year? Write down the question because you are going to do that in your own quiet time. You will need like four to six hours to do this. But ladies and gentlemen, if you do this well, it will empower you so much that 2024 will be better by far. If you are done with three, give me three, three, three as I move on to four. Okay, good, good. Question number four. Very important. Now, it's getting a bit technical. It says, what are the key activities that yielded the most positive and negative results? What are the key activities? Now, there's a concept called Vilfredo Pareto's Principle. And Vilfredo Pareto's Principle says, there are activities that are able to drive maximum results. So there's 20% that always brings 80% results. And there's 80% that always brings 20% results. And if you are able to identify, if you are able to identify the 20% that gives you 80%, then you don't need to waste your energy. You can simply know that if you use your energy correctly, you can use your energy to target 20% of the things that will give you super outcomes. Now, in the course of 2023, if you, if you look at the people, look at your habits, look at your beliefs, look at your environment, look at a few of these factors, you will find where small inputs create great outcomes. So let's say, for example, you got certified. So like, for example, for me, I got an executive MBA last year and I graduated with honors, okay? I scored approximately 98% in my 13 courses. Now, I achieved something that was fantastic. Now I have an MBA. I didn't know it was a big deal until I attended some meetings and they said, what's your highest degree? And I said, I have an MBA. I said, okay, okay, good. You have an MBA, fantastic. Now, um, what are the little things that made me achieve that? Okay, the little thing that made me achieve that was being deliberate and being committed to finishing. So all I needed to communicate, you know, to put into that was about one hour every day to push the envelope further, push the envelope further. And I, of course, kept in, in relationships that were doing the same thing so that I can be encouraging myself with other people's uh, ginger and push as well. And then that got me going. So what are the actions? So once you identify these activities, you ask yourself, what are the actions I can double down on that will lead to positive outcomes, you know, uh, or what are the I can cut down on that will lead to my negative actions? I'm looking for the habits, the people, the beliefs, the environment that generates this 80% of outputs for me. Okay? Very, very important. Question four, the accomplishment I made, what were the key drivers? The failures I made, what were the key drivers? What are the small inputs that create the biggest negative or positive outcomes in my life? It begins to give me an idea of what is causing me to succeed and what is causing me to fail. Okay? If question four is clear to you, give me four. Give me four, 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 and then I move on to the next question. Okay? Give me four. If I see a few fours, I move forward. The last question, but not the least, but the, certainly the most important question is question number five. What are my lessons realizations and takeaways from the past year. Okay? The past year must leave you wiser. It must leave you better. It must leave you more, more intelligent. It must leave you with wisdom, with counsel for what to make your new accomplishments, for what to make your new achievements, and for what to be your action steps into driving to achieve them. So reflect on the insights gained. Reflect on the relations made, the lessons learned during the year, Engaging these questions, perhaps with the guidance of a coach or a mentor, arms you with a greater chance of making 2024 a year of personal and professional advancement. Okay? I wish you all God's speed on your journey of reflection and growth. Ladies and gentlemen, once you can look at the first four questions and ask yourself, what now are my lessons? What are my realizations? What are my takeaways from this year? You know what this does? It makes you more armed to be able to say, you know what, in 2024, I want this achievement. 2024, I want to hit these financial milestones. 
in 2024, I want to build these relationships. In 2024, this is what I want to do differently in my spiritual life. I want to grow in character. I want to make disciples. Okay? Mentally, I want to learn a new language. I want to develop myself. I want to read 12 books. I want to read 13 book summaries. You're looking at the kind of things you want to do mentally. In your health, I want to do my steps. I want to increase my steps to 10,000 daily. Okay? These are the kind of things I want to do for my health. Or I want to pace my health and start that at a later time. Okay? Or this is what I want to do. You can sit yourself in my career. I want to do an MBA this year. Or I want to do a short course. I want to develop a skill set. I want to learn how to present. I want to learn how to use AI. I want to learn some of these things. Okay? This is what will make it better for me in the course of this year. You need to identify those realizations. And let me tell you something. If you are a, if you are developing content to play, to boost your business, content to get things done, guess what? One of the most beautiful content you can post this week and next week are lessons from 2023. Lessons from 2023, take away from 2023 are very powerful content ideas for developing your way forward. If what you have heard so far makes sense to you and you would like to break some records in 2024, please give me a yes in the comment section because I'm about to get to something even more exciting. If what you're hearing sounds exciting to you, okay, give me yes, yes, yes. I want to share something with you that is even more, more exciting. Now, this review I'm telling you to do, a few of us did this review as well, okay? I've done this review for myself. I've done this review for my wife. We've done this review as a family, my family, okay? We did this review as well to say, how did 2023 go and how can the next year be better, okay? And for the business, uh, some of us are doing together. I'm sure that we have guests in the room today. We have with our members. But in our business, we analyze and we realize something very interesting. That the rewards people earn from Global Synergia is six times the reward they earn from Green Mondays and Helping Lives combined. And it's basically looking at the metrics of what people achieved in three months versus what people achieved in nine months. Nine months of driving actively Green Monday and Helping Lives. The results that people achieved in nine months divided by three, compared to what people achieved in Global Synergia in three months, we realized it was times six. Six X. What does this mean? It means that if I want to achieve my financial goals at a bigger level next year, what must I do? I must get involved in Global Synergia and drive it well. Okay? There's an opportunity for me to six X, whatever value I'll have created on those other platforms, driving this. Okay? If you are following me in this, in this meeting today, please help me type in that comment box, 6x. 6x. Now, 6x means 600%. Okay, 6x. Okay? Now, we if you look at the past, you realize, where did you get your sign-ups happening? They happen because meetings happen. Okay? So this is not just a fad. This is a reality. Meetings make money. Okay? We realize in observing... Not, these are, and these are action steps. These are 80-20 principles that are able to achieve 80% results. Nothing beats physical meetings. Okay? Whatever business you're doing, nothing beats physical meetings. Daily grind is better than once in a while. Okay? Daily grind, having a habit, having a habit is better than once in a while. You, it fills you with energy. It fills you with zest. Okay? Uh, it fills you with zest and you can make more happen by being daily consistent than once in a while. And then, of course, everything you earn is real. It is real. This is not a fiction. This is not a storybook. Uh, no, this is real value. Real value nobody loses in. Now, we observe from our business. So for anybody who is here, who is doing that business, I want to encourage you in this coming year, do your review and plan for things to be better. Okay? Those who don't know the past, are bound to repeat his errors. Those who don't know the past are forever children. And the further back you can look, the better, the further forward you can see as well. Like Steve Jobs says, usually we can't connect the dots forward. We can only connect the dots backwards. Things only make sense after they have happened. But the longer we look at how things made sense in the past, the more we're able to discover a trend and then the trend can speak for the future. Okay? So very simply, what I'm saying is, Get the trend and then leverage the trend. Did you get me? Get the trend and then leverage the trend. If you got what I said, type it in the comment box. Get the trend and then leverage the trend.